My name is Dr. Ivory Thigpen. I am the representative for House District 79 as well as the pastor for Rehoboth Baptist Church. Uh, it is an honor and a privilege to stand here with all of these individuals as we not only remember, but more importantly, we carry on the mission of a man who knew the importance of caring for people. Uh, being uh, not only my fraternity brother, uh, not only clergy, uh, but in many respects, uh, as a legislator, I not only admired, but looked up to and considered myself a mentee of Representative Neal. Uh, he was and will continue to be, even in death, uh, a moral compass for this body. Uh, it was he who would champion what sometimes seemed like uh, impossible issues. Uh, but no matter how daunting the task, how high the mountain, uh, Joe was always ready for the challenge to climb. Uh, but he was one who did not climb alone, uh, but he also lifted others up and let down ladders so that all would understand the importance of his work. One of the greatest compliments I can give to Joe, the man, was that when he spoke in those chambers, everyone listened. It didn't matter your gender, didn't matter your political affiliation, didn't matter your age or party line. Uh, you knew that when Joe took time to speak to an issue, it was an issue of the heart uh, because he was one who cared. And as with every great man uh, and one man in history, uh, as great as they are, uh, they are no greater than the missions that they serve. And this mission, this collaborative health uh, mandate, I would even call it, uh, it is a mission that must continue. Uh, I'm, I'm honored to be included in this production, uh, not only to honor, once again, the man, but more importantly, continue the mission. Uh, I do believe that the mantle has fell to me, and I take that uh, with great honor. And again, it is a privilege to stand here with my colleague, uh, Senator Jackson, who is another who uh, I, I look to as a mentor, as well as uh, our great leader, uh, Gilda Falcon, a representative. Uh, we thank her for her work. Uh, but without further ado, let me get out of the way. Uh, if I know there are many who want to speak to this important cause. Allow me the privilege to introduce uh, Joe's sister, Wilma Neal Guerin, who will tell us more about this important mission. Uh, as she seeks to continue the legacy of her brother and his namesake in the health collaborative located in downtown Columbia. I am going to take a little liberty from what we set up to introduce Representative Gilda Cobb Hunter. She and Joseph fought lots of battles side by side in this state. And I think it's really important to hear from her. Thanks so much, Wilma. Let me say hey to all of you. I'm Gail Cobb Hunter, and I had the honor for at least 25 years of serving in the South Carolina House with my dear friend, my big brother, the Honorable Joseph Nee. I'm just thrilled to be here as we kick off this God's trombone. I can't think of a more fitting title. Uh, I saw Joe, still see Joe, as one of God's trombones. Yes. And I know these ministers back here are going to do justice to him and, his, and to his ministry and to his vision. I am really proud of Wilma and the rest of the Neal family, what they are doing to strive, in striving to keep his legacy alive in spite of. And there are a lot of things that come after in spite of. But I would just close my comments by suggesting to you that for Joe, it was not always about whether it was popular. It wasn't always about whether everybody was going in that direction. For Joe, it really boiled down to one or two simple things. Is it moral and is it right? And when you use those two barometers as measures for making decisions, it's clear why even two years later, he is still remembered fondly by people who care about people who care, 
there is a void in this General Assembly that cannot be filled. My colleague, Reverend Big Ben, is doing a great job in the House as far as stepping up to fill those big shoes. And given some time, I know he's going to succeed. But I'm looking forward to the production. I am 100% committed to the Joseph H. Neal Health Collaborative, to the work that they are doing, to the work they've already done. And I encourage anybody out there who cares about the least of these, who cares or remembers Joe Neal, reach out to the collaborative. Get involved and see how you can help. And finally, most importantly, and while we're here this morning, y'all get a ticket. Come to this production, get all these fine members, all these members of faith and these preachers. You know, I'm not a preacher. I don't even pretend to be one on TV. But I know these guys are going to really, really let it rip. So thank y'all so much. And remember, the Neil Collaborative needs your support, counting on your support, not just for God's trombones, but for all the work that they have done and intend to keep doing in this community. Thank you so much for being here, and thank you so much, Will, for allowing me to speak. Appreciate it. Y'all, you're about to make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> so if I do, please forgive me. Um, I feel Joe's presence. I feel that he lives right here in this moment through all of you, and I do so appreciate you so very much. My brother was so special. I had never known life without Joe. He was my, one of my three big brothers. And he showed su such compassion his whole life, even as little children. If there was a bird hurt, or an animal sick, and a person, Oh my God, he'd pick up the whole building to help that person. Uh, New York City, with our family. We're walking down the street in New York City, dead of winter. Joe sees a homeless man. He doesn't have a coat, he doesn't have shoes. Joe takes off his coat and gives it to him. And he sat down to take off his shoes, and my mother said, Boy, what you doing? You don't have to go home yet. <laughs> but that was Joe. I mean, that hit, what you saw of him was who he really was. So when my brother passed away, 10 o'clock at night, Valentine's Day, 2017, I cried for two days. It was so unexpected and it was such a huge loss to not just the family and to me, but to the world. I promised him, I was talking to him all through that, that agony, and I promised him that I would not allow the world to forget him. I was fortunate and blessed enough to be retired, so I've dedicated my time since his death. We sat down with the family and decided, you know, we need to have a living legacy for Joe so people don't forget. And we chose this arena because it was a passion for Joe. These were people that were just forgotten. Nobody wanted to recognize that they existed, who were in trouble and needed help. So Joe, this was near and dear to him. So we set up the collaborative and partnered with the third largest clinical AIDS organization in the world, Can Community Health out of Sarasota, Florida. They have been a wonderful partner. They have led us and guided us and, and taught us the things we needed to know. And we're making huge strides with our goal of eradicating HIV, AIDS in South Carolina. And let me say to you that if we don't do it here in the Deep South, it can't be done anywhere. We have to do it here. South Carolina leads in so many things that are not good, so we're going to lead in something that is good, that protects our citizens. So um, Joe's legacy started with the Westinghouse Superfund fight. That's how Joe got involved along with my good friend, Greg Hurst. That was when they met and the bat their battle started to 
together to make South Carolina a better place. Joe travels wide, widely all over the country learning about the problem. And then the AIDS situation came up when the, 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 the anonymous testing was in jeopardy. And he jumped right in there and turned it around, opened it up, and, and as he does everything, he did it out of, out of doing his solid research, talking to people across the aisles and within his own party, and making it a reality. He was a larger-than-life presence and has had a larger-than-life uh, impact on people around the world. So here we are um, in the midst of trying to put together something really, really special. We are a statewide organization. We were one years old last month. As of July 1st, we got the necessary regulations in place, along with our partner, CAN, to really make a difference. And that's what we're doing. We're gearing up. We've been very fortunate to receive, with the help of Senator Jackson and Representative Bigpen and, and Representative Gil Gildercott Hunter and many others, where, uh, Speaker of the House Jay Lucas, all worked with us hand in hand to get this done and give us recurring appropriations so that we could work on this issue in this space. And I thank them, my family thanks them all from the bottom of our heart. That was something they didn't have to do with. They knew Joe. So um, we're doing this fundraiser, fundraiser on August 31st for Joe at the Lower Richland High School out of Um It will be an epic piece. I promise you, with these ministers and more, if you want a good time to go to, this is the place to be. We are selling tickets, $35 per person, and you better get them soon because they're going fast. But we're also selling sponsorships, and I would encourage anyone in the sound of my voice, everyone, to help us sell those sponsorships because that's what's going to anchor us in the community and allow us to do more. With that said, um, I would like to introduce so that you will have a little blush of what you're going to get at God's trombone, Bishop Ted Hunt. He is and has been a really important person in my brother's life. They were friends through the ages, and he's a very important person to our family. Thank you. Thank you. I am Bishop Ted Myers. Joe and I have been friends for a long time. During our college days, we worked together and did some things together. Joe was first planning to run for office. I had a school, and he stopped by to see me and said, give me an idea of what we can do to get this thing accomplished. And tell me if you think I'm the right person for it. Of course. I had nothing to say, but Joe, you're the right person for him. <laughs> you, 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 you qualify in so many ways. Joe and I have been friends through the ages. When he became a representative, I learned something else, how dedicated he was to the development of people, no matter where they were, or what their state in life might have been. So it is very appropriate, I think, that we would look at celebrating this time and give an honor to this time to say God's trombone is being sounded. Yes. And so Joe spoke to the idea that God is speaking to every Pharaoh, no matter where Pharaoh might be, yes. no matter what his name might be, no matter where he lives, Joe speaks to that Pharaoh. And so God's trombone speaks to that Pharaoh. When Johnson wrote this, he said, then God spoke to Moses. And he spoke in a voice of thunder. I am God Almighty. I am God of thy father. I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Moses, his face. And he hid his face. And God said, Moses, 
I've seen the awful suffering of my people down in Egypt. I've watched their oppressor, the overseers and drivers. The groan of my people have filled my ears, and I can't stand it anymore. So I come down to deliver them out of Egypt land, and I will bring them out of that land into the land of Canaan. Go down into Egypt. Tell old Pharaoh to let my people go. I think that yeah. sums up <laughs> what Joe said yeah. and what it means to us to say to every Pharaoh, let my people go. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.